Hey guys, welcome back to Tony's Outtoos. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use AppSheet for beginners. Before we start, hurry up and check out the software just under this video. So let's get started. In this case, you might be wondering how do you start using Google AppSheet here? Well, using AppSheet here is actually pretty easy and you don't need any experience in coding for you to create your own app. Now, in this case, to get us started, we first need to go to their official website, which is going to be appsheet.com. Now, from their website, you should be able to see a different information regarding the platform itself. So in this case, this actually harnesses the power of AI to create and power your apps here, which in this case makes your app more intelligent, or in this case, describes them as intelligent apps. Now, the great thing about this one is you could just basically drag and drop elements here and even customize the elements that we'll be using later on. So you could basically create your own here or use one of the templates here. Like for example, you really want to start creating your app here. You could choose from the following templates which include simple survey, simple inventory, Kanban board, project tracker. So whatever you need here, you should be able to start building them. Now, in this case, they also have a page here or a tab to uh, basically describe how to create your own app here. Now, if you're wondering how do you, uh, what is the pricing here? So currently, the pricing for AppSheet is one of the following. So the starter plan is the cheapest, which is $5 a month. We also have the core and enterprise plan plus plan as well. Now, in this case, to get data started, we first need to click on the Get Started button at the top right of our screen here and choose how we want to sign in. So I want to sign in via Google here and just choose our Google account. Now from here, let's go and click on Continue to proceed. And from here, let's go and click on Allow. Now, from here, what we need to do next is we need to complete the whole process here. So it's going to give you some information here, like the automate workflows, even connect existing data, and even uh, do the following, which is case build apps. Now the great thing about AppSheet here is if you already have an existing data, may it be an Excel file or an, a sheet, well in this case, you could basically upload them. So the main UI here in AppSheet, we have two UIs. So we have apps and databases. Now apps will contain the apps that you've created and database will contain all the data they have prepared for your app. So we also have the shared with me section, which in this case, apps that is shared with you, apps that is uh, owned by you. And we also have templates here, which in this case, if you want to rapidly create your own uh, app here. Now in this case, what we need to do is we first need to create our database. Let's go and click on new database. And from here, what we need to do is we need to choose what the method that we want to do. So go ahead and click on get started here. And as you can see, we have our database. So for now, we have the following. So in this case, we have our column, which in this case is going to be the name or the name of the value that will be later on um, uh, retrieved for, for our app. So we have our signee, we have the status and date. So you create your own column here, just click on add column and you should be able to create or add a name for that column and what type of uh, column it is. So it's really important to set the correct type or uh, type of col uh, column here. Because in this case, like for example, if you're going to set this in email, the column itself will actually require you to enter a specific format. So just to give you the I'm going to add an email section here. And from here, let's go ahead and add or whatever here. But as you can see, it's going to say it must be an email. So that's why we need to basically choose the correct uh, column. So since this is an email, it requires at, and from here, let's just say this is going to be gmail.com. Now this will actually accept the value itself. So yeah, so depending on the type of column that you'll be uh, using here, they will only accept specific type of data. So if you choose sex, it will it will accept text here. But if you choose number, it will only accept number. Or if you choose decimal, it will actually uh, use or decimal formats. Now, obviously, there's going to be a lot of columns or different columns you know you can use like yes or no, URL, progress, price, and phone, and a lot more. But yeah, so in this case, you could go and create your own table here. So in this case, this is the d database that we have right now. Let's go and click on uh, this card here. And from here, you could speak, basically rename your database. So I'm just going to say this is going to be a sample database. And we could also add tables if you want to. And also what we need to do next is we just need to save this. So going back in here, let's go and refresh our page. And we should now have our database here as you can see right now. 
Now, if you want to delete this, you can go click on the dot icon here, click on delete, or even edit it if you want to. Now, in this case, you could add filters, uh, groups, if you want to add configurations on the layout, like for yourself, which visible column is going to be in here. But if you want to add some uh, rows here, you could go add fill, uh, country account by value, count fill, and a lot more. You could go and add them if you want to. Also have the grid here, which in this case grids or basically organizes your data for you. So we want to use the grid layout here. You can go ahead and see the current layout for this one. So it's going to arrange it in a way that you want to actually view them. So depending on your uh, requirement here. But yeah, so in this case, I want to actually choose a one that is going to be a bit official to me. Let's go and choose uh, the following values. So in this case, you can cancel the grouping itself if you want to. Like for example, if you just group this by status, this is what it's going to be look like. So I want to revert that by clicking on status again and making sure that I uncheck the grouping here. So in this case, I could go ahead and uh, cancel it if you want to. Just click on cancel grouping. So in this case, going back here, we wanna we now want to go to apps. Now from here, just go and click on explore templates here. And we want to choose one of the following templates. So for example, we want to create a simple survey inventory or simple survey here. Let's go ahead and choose this one. Let's go and click on it. And that should actually use that specific template for your app. Now in this case, you could go ahead and do the following. Like for example, copy and customize or look under the hood if you want to. So for now, we want to click on copy and customize and we now need to add our app name. So for example, I'm going to say test app survey. And from here, we want to uh, use the category. So for example, field service, property and management, inventory management. So in this case, maybe I want to say this is for uh, marketing. Let's go and click on copy app. Now this will actually co copy the app itself. And once it is successfully copied, you should be able to start editing the actual app. So in this case, let's just wait for it to load it up. So once you actually open up the app here, you should be able to start editing it. As you can see, this is what the form is going to look like. We have buttons, we have date and time here. So in this case, at the right side, this is what it's going to look like. So if you want to edit a specific section, you could go ahead and click on the edit button in here and just click on edit column or edit column or order. Let's go ahead and click on edit column. Now you could change the following details, like for example, the column name, the show, the type, the values for it, allow other values if you want to. Now if you want to see the actual data, you could go and click on go to data here and you should be able to see the actual data here. So in this case, we have the name of the data here, the type and the ID, like what we saw before on the database in here. So if you click on view a data source here, you should be able to see the data, data the, uh, uh, the actual uh, source of this data. Now, if you want to edit the table settings here, you could go ahead and do that. As you can see, we have the table name here, the storage here, the security for that table, and a lot more. So obviously there's going to be a lot that you do here. Let's go ahead and go to the other things that we could actually uh, do. So in this case, you could go ahead and click on delete. If you want to delete the public form here, you can even uh, use the energetic schema, add virtual columns if you want to. So yeah. Now the great thing about this one is you can actually change the view itself. So for example, the phone is actually a uh, flip on the side. You can change the view itself and just have a preview of it. You can also use the mobile here as you can see right now. So in this case, if you want to edit a specific uh, column here, you could go ahead and click on the uh, icon or the pencil icon here and you should be able to edit it. And if you want to uh, make the uh, actual uh, data editable, you can go and click on editable here if you want to require that specific uh, information whenever someone actually enters or use that specific section. As you can see, we have the asterisk on it. So as you can see, it is required. So in this case, it is uh, currently date and time here is required as you can see right now. So when we're, whenever you actually uncheck this, it is no longer required, but let's go ahead and keep this one as is. Now, in this case, uh, we have our actions here, which in this case, we have the option to edit it if you want to. Uh, the delete here, which in this case, action name, we also have the add option as well. We also have the open file section here, which in this case, you have the uh, options like the action name for record and position attached columns. If you want to add your own actions, you can click on the plus button here and you should be able to uh, view uh, uh, certain actions. Like for example, add individual buttons to so set state of drop drop down on public form. 
Now, the great thing about this one is it actually uses AI to create those actions. So you just need to describe them. How do you want to actually something actually perform? Now, you also have the automation here if you want to create your own automations for your app. You just need to describe it. So that's why this app or uh, Google Apps here is actually pretty good because they use this AI to code for you or organize all the details that you want to in here. So in this case, uh, you could go ahead and start editing it. For example, you want to open up in a browser. If you want to view it in your browser, as you can see right now, this is what it's going to look like. So yeah, so you can go ahead and click on whatever here and choose whatever values that you have. Now, for example, we want to go to the drop down section here. Let's go ahead and click on data here. And we want to actually choose the drop down here, click on the uh, pencil icon. And again, you should be able to add values if you want to, or delete values if you want to. As you can see, I was able to delete this. And whatever changes I uh, actually do, to do here, so we'll click on done, click on save. And whenever I actually preview the actual app, you should be able to actually see, as you can see, Violet is no longer there. Let's go and click on done. Now, in this case, you could even uh, click edit the column order here if you want to. So in this case, you could go and click on this one and uh, basically change how it's going to look like. So for example, we want to increase the column or decrease it if you want to. So in this case, uh, for example, I want to change the button here. Let's go into column order. As you can see, we have the max nested rows here. Uh, auto save, auto re uh, open if you want to. And you can even change the view type. So depending, for example, you want to onboarding, card, gallery, or table, or deck, or calendar here, or map even. So in this case, you could go ahead and go to your uh, sections here. So for example, let's go ahead and click on the form section here. If you want to edit it, you could basically change the team, primary colors, the app logo, if you have that launch image and background image as well. So there's going to be some customization that you could do here. Now, in this case, uh, for so in the section here, whenever you actually go to the forum section here and click on the edit view option, you have the column order here. So in this case, if you want to basically add a new section or a new entry here, so just give me the idea, I'm going to click on add here and I want to add a column after. So I want to actually choose all other columns here and you want to go ahead and click on select column and that should actually create your own column here. And if you want to re rearrange them, you could go ahead and click or press and hold on the left side here. Now, in this case, uh, you could go ahead and start editing it if you want to. So, yeah. So in this case, uh, that's about it. So it's actually pretty simple on how to use it. And uh, the options here or the capabilities that you could do or edit here is quite nice, but the uh, it's quite simple here if you want to use it, especially for people who do not know how to code, you should be able to start using it. As you can see, since I did signature here, I should be able to add them again. So yeah, so that's about it. So if you found this video helpful, hit the like and subscribe button and watch our next video.